Let's for a moment imagine a world where all corporations are a force for good, where everyone from the CEO to the newest hire are driven, not only by their personal career and business goals, but by their desire to be a part of something bigger than themselves and to be a better version of themselves. For decades, corporate social responsibility or CSR has been the way companies have demonstrated their commitment to positive social impact. But we're now approaching a tipping point where most everyone in business knows that CSR can also be a pathway to meaningful impact and engagement and success in business. Today's corporate purpose is not your grandfather's CSR. More and more corporations are adopting authentic, empowered approaches to purpose. And they are doing it first and foremost because it's the right thing to do. I'm Sona Kosla, Chief Impact Officer at Benevity and your host. From our HQ here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, we provide the technology platform behind some of the most iconic purpose-driven brands in the world. We power the programs that companies use to engage their employees, customers, and nonprofit partners in doing more good at scale and around the world. We started this podcast to celebrate the passionate and persistent people that are paving the way for more purpose in business. If nothing else but an antidote to the headlines that criticize business for failing to live up to their promises, we will reveal the rock stars who are delivering on an authentic desire to work, live, and lead with purpose. Welcome to Speaking of Purpose by Benevity. This season's theme is movements. In 2020, we saw grassroots movements take the world by storm. The COVID-19 pandemic caused communities to rally around frontline workers, local business, mental health, and food security. And in June, Black Lives Matter protests led to a momentous rise in action and donations in support of racial justice and equity, more than for any single cause category in Benevity's history. Whether your name is Greta or George, we've seen the power that a single individual can have in convening millions in a cause. These quick forming coalitions create movements, a groundswell of support behind an important cause that can catch the wind when the time is right. Whether it's for a small localized event or big global issues, we've seen how one person can draw millions into a moment that can quickly turn into a movement. This season on the podcast, we're going to talk movements with everyone from founders of small innovative nonprofits to the leaders of large corporations to Benevity's own founder and executive chairperson and top CSR influence leader, Brian DeLottenville. On today's episode, we ask, who creates movements within a corporation? I, I think one of the responsibility of, of leaders is to make sure that the people who work in your organization essentially under your care, feel not only safe, but they feel inspired by being in your organization. This is Francois Loco Donu. And so what I hear our employees feel pride of being part of what F5 stands for. You know, it gives me great joy and confidence in the in the future of the organization. And it's, you know, it's the, I can't put that in a spreadsheet, but I know it does make a difference to the business. But more importantly, I, I, I feel that it makes a difference in the lives of the people who work for, for F5. And I, I think as leaders, that's what we should aspire to do. Francois is the president and CEO of F5, a global technology company with 76 locations in 43 countries and 6,000 employees. For their customers, F5 builds and supports applications that create seamless, secure business solutions. They work with the world's leading retailers, financial institutions, telecom operators, insurance companies, and more. 48 companies in the Fortune 50 rely on F5. For their people, they create an environment of pride. Pride in the place that they work and pride in F5's commitment to corporate purpose. As CEO, Francois knows the value of pride within a company. But where does pride come from? And who's responsible for creating it? Francois says that employees must be the driving force of purpose within a company, but for purpose to be authentic, the leadership team must believe in it and create a culture in which it can take hold. I think that for me, for a company to do that effectively, 
I say it has to come from the heart uh, of the leaders. The, the leaders have to fundamentally believe that it's the right thing to do, not because of business reasons, but because of the world that they want to create. And I think a company can only do that if there's a, a critical mass of top leaders in the company who have fundamental beliefs and passions around wanting to contribute beyond profits in the world in which they operate. And so, when Francois joined F5, he brought with him a wave of cultural change focused on channeling the passion of their people. Over time, I, I felt, wow, we should really try and make our companies platforms that enable people to live these passions whilst they're working in, in, in our companies. And so when I joined F5, that was really a design point for me that I knew there were a lot of passions inside of F5, but I said, you know, could we make the F5 more of a platform for our employees? Yes, they, they love what we're doing and they're intellectually stimulated by the technology and how our customers are using the technology and what, what it's changing, you know, in, in the world. But they're also probably passionate about other things that come from their life experience. And I want to enable that too, so they can live those passions. Leaders need to make their companies a platform for their employees. But how do they do that? And if you're out there hiring leaders, how do you find the right ones? For Francois, as with most of us, the answer to those questions began long before he was the CEO of a multinational company. You know, I, I grew up in a country in Togo where, you know, the majority of the people live under the, the, the threshold of poverty. There's a lot of poverty there. And so my, my family was well off. I, I wasn't in poverty, but, you know, I went to school with people who had to walk many miles to go to school, who sometimes would eat once a day. In the village where, where our family comes from, you know, there was just very little. And so being confronted early on with um, there are poor people and there are people who have money. And why is that? You know, why, why is my friend not able to afford the uh, three meals a day? It, early on in life, I, I, you know, I felt these questions and, and the need to find justice for people who didn't have access to, to opportunity. I also had a, a grandmother who was very generous and very giving and who would always tell her um, 16 children and grandkids that um, we should never eat to a full stomach in front of people who, are, who don't have food. And she meant it very literally. But, I, you know, it stayed with me. And as I grew up, I found there was so much wisdom in what she said, both literally, but you can look at a lot of the ills of our world today and uh, you can trace a lot of them back to people eating to a full stomach for people who have, who have nothing and how, how sustainable is that over a period of time. And so I think for me, that, that is the piece that was always there that if, if I was ever able to you know, to get to a full stomach and, and you know, uh, earn a living and have a job, et cetera, that I would always find a way to give access to opportunities to people who hadn't had the, the same opportunity or who were in hardship or in a difficult situation. Francois's commitment to helping others came from his environment growing up and the lessons he learned as a child. Years later, as the CEO of F5, he's now responsible for hiring the leaders that will create the work environment he envisions the culture of purpose, giving, and caring that will have long-term benefits to the world and to his company. But how does Francois determine that the leaders he's hiring have the mindset to bring this vision to life? It's a topic of constant reflection for me. We, we had a new leaders coming into F5 over the last couple of years. And of course, there was, you know, like every company, there, there were certain elements of domain expertise and experience and skills that, that we wanted. But once those were given, for me, there were three criteria that I was truly looking for in, in those leaders because I knew it would be important for the things we wanted to do. One was humility, which is important to me because in, in the technology industry, the time you become you know, satisfied with, with what you've done is kind of the beginning of the end because there's always new things coming. And sometimes in technology, humility is both um, it's both rare <laughs> and a very precious attitude. The other one is generosity uh, because generosity is what leaders are willing to give, uh, both literally in terms of, you know, giving to causes and, and, and things but then inside and outside the company, but giving to other people giving your time, giving advice, giving an ear, helping people see things in themselves that they couldn't see otherwise. And 
you know, gener generous leaders make a huge difference in, a, in an organization. And then the third one was courage, because I, I feel that to make decisions that are great for the company and the organization over the long term, even if sometimes they're not great for the short term, you have to have the courage of your convictions. And that's true both about you know, business issues like an acquisition or you know, issues that are more to do with a culture, where sometimes you have to make really tough decisions in the short term to, to make sure your culture grows over the long term. So humility, generosity, and courage are the, the qualities that we wanted. But when you have a critical mass of people that, that have those traits, then you you see kind of a movement uh, take on the company because they bring they bring people that, that share those beliefs and you see the energy levels in the in the company go up. Humility, generosity, and courage. Three qualities that Francois looks for in a leader. These are not the personality traits we are used to seeing in executive leadership. And as Francois seeks a new set of competencies, he finds a different type of leader. Even with the best of intentions, the quest for corporate purpose can sometimes go wrong. So what can derail a company that wants to do good? Francois believes that when a company tries to rationalize the business reasons of doing good, they can quickly lose sight of the goal to make the world a better place. The, the danger, and I, I have seen that a few times where, you know, a company rationalized the business benefits of doing, of doing good uh, because shareholders won't invest in companies that are not doing that for the long term because it is seen as potentially a, a competitive advantage in, in talent or it's seen as a, a something that will attract uh, customers down the road. And, and companies use these reasons to go and, and deliver these programs. What, what happens then is you see a lot of focus on the, the what and the how and the programs that are put in place and the effectiveness of these programs. But I don't believe that that down the road can truly be a movement inside of a company if there isn't personal energy and belief from leaders that come from a very deep place. But fundamentally, the, the, the challenge with that is that, you know, when you are, especially for public companies, you know, you are measured every 90 days on things that have never, nothing to do with diversity of inclusion, doing good in your community, you know, upholding certain values and, and nurturing a certain culture, treating uh, both people inside and outside the company in a certain way. None of these things are measured every 90 days. And so in, in a public company, the energy always goes first to those things that are measured and especially measured by your investors on a regular basis. And so it takes a lot of personal energy, a lot of belief from the leaders to move the energy, you know, constantly move the energy a lot back to those things that are not measured all the time, but make a tremendous difference over the long term. We've talked about the important role of leadership in embracing purpose, but Francois knows that authentic purpose rarely only comes from the top. Instead, it's the individuals within a company creating grassroots movements based on a genuine interest that can cause a business to transform from the inside out. My observation of the biggest change in organizations, when, when organizations make quantum leap forward, frankly, it rarely comes from a CEO or an executive that has a lot of power uh, saying, I have a new idea and we should go do this. That's a myth. Okay. The quantum leaps in organizations come from people who are closer to customers, closer to employees, closer to how the work really gets done in an organization, and who raise their voice and who say, enough, we're not going to do it this way anymore, because that doesn't make sense. Now, it, of course, requires that executives have created an environment where you can raise your hand and suggest and recommend change and be heard and not retaliated against. But... Assuming that's the case, I think those folks who want to champion this, and, and, and in any organization, there will be more than one. If they can find a way to get together and raise their voice together and say, we have, as an organization, to take a different stance and be a force of proposition and say, not only I'm raising my hand to say, 
you know, we've got to take a different stance, but I'm going to be part of the solution. Like I am generous enough to go and invest my time beyond my day job to help this organization change. I think that has, even if the CEO isn't passionate about this, um, I think that has a lot of chances of, of being successful if it has a critical mass of, of employees who want to do that. So unite and raise your hand would be my, my, uh, my advice. Creating a movement within a company requires courage and commitment from both leadership and employees. Leadership must come to the table with a genuine desire to create a culture where purpose can thrive. And at the same time, the direction and effort towards purpose is best when it comes from individual employees, ones who believe they have a voice and who have a vision for a better world. When leadership and employees meet on these terms, companies have the power to create the perfect conditions where moments can turn into movements. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Speaking of Purpose by Benevity. Today's episode of Speaking of Purpose was created by the passionate team here at Benevity. If you enjoyed our show and think it could spark a little more purpose for someone else, please consider sharing it with a colleague or a friend. Special thanks to our guest, Francois Loco Donu, and to everyone at F5 Networks for their support in making this show happen. For links to their website, Benevity Impact Labs, and other helpful resources, please check out the show notes. For more episodes, you can subscribe to Speaking of Purpose wherever you get your podcasts. And come say hi to us on social media. We'd love to hear what you thought about today's episode and what you might want to hear more about in future episodes. You can learn more about us at Benevity.com. Thanks for listening and keep speaking of purpose.